guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Trish. Uh, Trish Rush is actually a nickname my brother gave me when I was a little kid, so that's why it's called Trish Rush Plants, just in case anybody was wondering. So this is my first ever video, so hopefully it goes well, and if it doesn't, let me know um, things in the comments about what you would like to see differently, or how I could do better, because I'm pretty nervous. So... This is going to be my wellness spread for this week. Obviously, it is Wednesday, and that's okay because I am quite busy. So, sometimes my plan with me's or my planning in general doesn't get done until the middle of the week. So, it is what it is. So, I try to do it ahead of time, but it doesn't actually work out. So, anyhow. So... My wellness planner is probably my first planner I've ever bought with Happy Planner. It was my introduction into the Happy Planner world. So I actually still have this one. It was an 18 month planner and this is obviously the end of the road for that one. So I'm actually very excited to start in something new, but this was my first ever introduction in the Happy Planner. So, alrighty. So, I have quite a few books and quite a few being way more than the four or five I'm going to jump into today, but I think I will try and stick with the Happy Goals, um, the Digital Detox, and Wellness Planning, which I just got this one and I'm super excited to use. Also... Mood tracking, maybe. I don't know yet. And the Wellness Warrior accessory book. So let's get to it. So, Happy Goals. I guess not everybody thinks it's a wellness book. I don't know it says Wellness Warrior on it, but not everybody use it, uses it as wellness. But I like it because the colors are not as muted as all the other books. I like the muted colors, but I'm also a very colorful person, and this one just kind of makes me very happy and smiley, so let's see. And wellness is something that I have been trying to work on for a while, um, just because I do so much throughout the week. I work two jobs and have a 14-year-old stepson and my boyfriend. I have 12 years so and a puppy so there's a lot going on as far as like in my life so wellness is something that kind of falls to the back burner so I'm trying to do a little better so let's see I like to start my week with the happy list just because I have a very stressful job Monday through Friday I'm a um a manager of a call center at a bank and we deal with a lot of fraud cases so a lot of the phone calls that we take are people griping <laughs> so um and we also have quite a few um investigations that we have to go through so i basically have to dig through investigations every day and decide whether they need to be closed or not closed things like that so it can be quite stressful when I get all the work done or try to get all the work done so let's see I think I am gonna just stick with this one it's happy so and I'm trying to be more purposeful with my life and be more present so I think I will use this one. So on top of the daunting investigations job, I am also a restaurant manager. And if that wasn't enough to deal with, I'm also getting my master's degree. So um, it can be a little more work than I intended sometimes, but that's okay. 
I don't think I work well if there's not chaos in my life, so. Let's see, I think I'm gonna put this one here. I'm not a big like whiting out the lines person. They don't bother me. I know some people are, but it, it doesn't bother me. So if it does bother you, I apologize. But it is my video, isn't it? So let's see. I think we'll kind of stick with the purpose theme here. We've already used the blue. So I'm going to use the pink instead. Ooh, I do not like that. So. I'm not one of those that like to use a sticker planing sheet. I kind of just go with the flow. Um, so if you see me peel up a lot of things and put them back down going forward, like right now, that is kind of just how I roll. Um, <laughs> I'm a hot mess. Obviously, you can see I just tore that, but I might fix that later. But yeah, so that's my planning style it's really not like when everybody's like oh my gosh like it's amazing and uh talent I'm like yeah it's just me playing with stickers but <laughs> you know spatially so let's see the enemy of a focus mind is clutter and chaos I like that a whole bunch I put that here which is hilarious because if you were to see my apartment right now, it is the pure definition of clutter and chaos. But, you know, I don't always have time for things like that. All right, so passion fuels purpose. I kind of like this here, I think. So I try to keep my wellness planner pretty functional in the sense that I don't really use it for functional purposes. Um, I like to make lists in there. I like to do a lot of reflection, a lot of affirmations. So I really don't like to... Um, limit my space as far as what I want to write in. I don't really put any uh, actual plans in my wellness planner just because I, f I work with so many planners that um, I just don't feel the need to write all of my plans in every single planner that I have. So I think I'm going to put this here. So I do like to leave at least one kind of almost empty box, like this one, like, you know, there's the, this, but there's a lot of writing space down here. So that's kind of where I like to do. So I like to leave at least one empty box in each row. I don't really decorate down here just because I really did use these journal prompts to write. So... That's really, I'm trying to be more mindful with what I've got going on. So I try, and I don't really have a lot of time to journal. So I really just try to keep those empty for that. So let's see. I think I'm going to dig into the digital detox this one I've had for quite a while and I just really don't use it as much as I should honestly it's really hard for me to detox digitally digitally <laughs> because I'm um, my school's online I am currently working from home for at least the next week or so um and my pastimes pretty much include watching Netflix so <laughs> um and podcast and so it's really really difficult for me to unplug sometimes I also 
because of the like some of the difficulties I have processing information it's easier for me to keep everything electronic I also listen to a lot of uh, different binaural beats to keep me focused so unplugging completely is not something that I'm able to do I wish I could but I can't so I just try to find moments in the day where I can unplug. So I think I really like this one, especially like the reconnecting with paper and pens. That is basically the whole point of my planning journey is to reconnect with paper and pens. So that is why I do it. I can, ooh, doodles and dreams, I like that. Sometimes I like to doodle. It's very, very little, but I do like to, I like to draw chibi superheroes, which maybe I'll do a video on that one day, but I think they're really cute. So maybe I'll do one of those in there this week. We'll see. So, I think that I'm going to make one of these boxes a list. Saturday is my only day off normally. So I think I'm gonna make a list of things to do that will give me a digital bucket list of sorts. Let's do that. So I actually, I think I'm gonna cut this one. What's it look like? Okay, I'm gonna cut this one. So, I think that's what I'm gonna do for my whole Saturday box there, just because I do like, I like to have a lot of things in the background as far as like digital stuff, I guess you could say. But um, for the most part, I don't even really listen to it. Like right now, I actually have How to Get Away with Murder playing while I'm working from home. And I cannot literally count how many times I've restarted this show because I'm just not paying attention. And it's funny because it's literally on and I'm just not paying any attention. I really don't like how I did that. Okay, well, whatever. It is what it is. We'll fix it. Okay, so read a book. So I am a serial book buyer. It's horrible. I buy a lot of books. I check out a lot of books. At some point, the city of Dallas is going to ban me from checking out books, but it is what it is. I actually currently have 17 books checked out to me from the library. All digital. Uh... And I read them hardly ever, <laughs> but uh, I do like to read books. I just never really have time for it. I am also like, never let me borrow a book. You'll never get it back. I'm so serious. I have had friends who have let me borrow books and then they they're nice enough not to ask for it back, you know what I mean? Like, they're not one of those people that are like, hey, did you finish that book? Because I would really like it back and you have failed to bring it back to me. But they also know that I'm not going to bring it back <laughs> unless they ask for it. So it's one of those, like, it cracks me up because people are so nice about it. Because I'm horrible. I'm just a horrible person when it comes to bringing books back and or reading them for that matter so when people are trying to be very nice and to let me know that like I've had their book for a year now and I haven't brought it back like they either just go ahead and buy themselves the new version of their book or they really will actually be like hey can you bring that back and I do sometimes and Sometimes it'll take another six months before I actually remember to bring it back because let me tell you, my memory is awful. It's awful, awful, awful. Which is funny because you would think with all the planners and lists I have, I would remember to do things, but oh, okay, sure, I do not. So 
Let's see. I'm going to put go to bed early. So I have a final paper due on Friday. And I am a serial procrastinator. So I'm going to try and get the paper done on Friday before midnight. But I can guarantee you, I won't. <laughs> I won't even start it before like a midnight, which is horrible. But I will try to. That's the goal. That's the goal every day, actually, is to get my homework done before it's time for me to go to bed. But it doesn't actually work out sometimes. So, let's see. Read a book, do a puzzle, take a nap, organize, cause it, go to bed early. I think I'm going to try a new recipe. This is a lot of ambition for this week, I can tell already. And it's not really going to work out. But, we'll try it. So, and if it doesn't work out, I think I'm just going to leave a space that says it didn't work out. Because I had way too many ambitions for one person in one day. So, okay. I think that's enough. I think I've overcommitted as it is. <laughs> so. Okay. I think I'm going to add an affirmations box. I like to try and do an affirmation in every section of my planner just because I feel like you know you can have multiple as affirmations for every aspect of your life and that's something I really do try to do I mean I may not say it every day it may not be like necessarily the greatest mantra approach in the world there is but I do try to visualize and manifest certain goals sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't <laughs> but that's completely okay with me like right now I'm currently interviewing for a job and um well I've interviewed I'll say that I've interviewed already for a job and I'm just waiting to hear back and Unfortunately, due to the the timing of the holidays, it is possible, and it's looking very likely at this point, that I'm not going to hear back until January. So, um, which kind of really sucks because my job's a huge dumpster fire at the moment, and I really need to get out. But it is what it is. So, I... I don't like that empty space right there. Okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'm really just trying to be patient. You know, that's all I can do is be patient and have faith. And, you know, I, I interview really well. And that is something that I pride myself on is that I do interview really well. Um, you know, my dad was old school and, you know, pretty traditional values as far as getting a job goes. And I'm, you know, pretty much follow that same aesthetic. So, you know, if you end up interviewing me one day, but who knows, you know, maybe my dream job will pop along. Um... And you will, <laughs> but uh, basically, I try to make sure that my most important thing is to have questions to ask. I'm using my floor book to fill in some of this space because I don't like it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, if there's any one tip that my dad taught me, you know, when looking for a job is that you have to ask questions at the end of your interview because at the end of the day 
that's what oh these are pretty <gasps> oh but i have that dark florals book and i might just leave those for that okay plus these are more pastel colors <sighs> remember me mentioning i don't like muted colors this is why okay uh so anyhow but anyway so number one tip as far as interviews go so my dad always said you have to ask questions at the interview i'm not like how much does this job pay questions right you, you have to ask meaningful questions so my most meaningful question i will share with you guys and don't just start stealing my stuff right no i don't care really so my most meaningful question I ask people when I'm getting interviewed is if I am not the right person for the position, then what skills should I work on should the position reopen up? Now, why do you ask? Why would I, you ask that question? It makes you sound like you're not confident in your skills. Of course you're confident in your skills, right? But you ask that question because it puts in an interviewer's mind that you really want the job. Like this isn't just something that you're going to apply for and if you don't get, you're not coming back. It leaves in their mind that, hey, she... She seemed pretty serious about this. And maybe if it doesn't work out, we can call upon her when things fall through. Because let's let's be real. Not everyone who gets a job is the best fit for the job, right? Like I we hired somebody when I first became a manager, and I didn't hire them, but somebody else did. I mean, it made that sound very horrible, but you know, it is what it is. Oh no, I think I messed up. Anyway, so there was this person that they hired for the job. So basically this person was going for a supervisor position, but I got it. So they, um, they asked guy who was interviewing you know looking inward I don't really type or write a lot for that so I'm just gonna cover it a little bit there's still space but it is what it is anyway. so they asked you know they asked if he wanted to do the analyst job which is what I was leaving anyway and they needed to be so fun so they he said sure I'll do it well he ended up being like the worst employee ever <laughs> like ever so there was one guy who was really good for the job but didn't get it and we ended up having to crawl back to him a couple weeks months later and saying hey guess what we should have hired you and so yeah that's why you ask those questions because when you leave that impression in somebody's mind that you still want the job even if you don't get it they'll come back to you okay so I think this is all I'm gonna do for this one but since you guys are here, I'll go ahead and fill out this, this part here. So I'm going to say the positive word of this week is going to be hope. Because we're going to just hope I get the job. <laughs> no, I feel like I got it. I'm just waiting. You know, manifest. Uh, so reading. So one of the books I am reading this week is The Nest. I've restarted this book I think like 15 times. Again, City of Dallas. I swear to you, I'll re I'll return it when I'm done and stop. I will stop rechecking it out. But it's pretty good. It's interesting. So listening to. So I am a true crime fanatic, and I am currently listening to. Tom Brown's body, which is an unsolved in Canadian Texas, and it was done by Texas Monthly, who does really great true crime articles. So, and it's um, 
the host just skipped called Hollingsworth, which if you don't know who he is, he's one of the better true crime columnists, especially for the Texas Monthly Magazine. So super excited about that. I'm like four episodes in and it's quite interesting. So if that's kind of where you're at as far as like a true crime fanatic, I would listen to it. Feeling. I would say feeling. Hmm. I'm probably going to put apprehensive just because I am. There's a lot of things going on that I just kind of have my... My antenna up, just kind of monitoring, watching. So currently I am watching How to Get Away with Murder. I'm almost done with it. I'm literally on the last episode right now. So I'm probably not going to be watching this all week. Usually in the background I'm watching I Survived or Cold Case, which is on Roku right now. And they're threatening to take my cold case away, so I keep watching it. So, anywho. Alright, so I think this is all I'm going to do for this week. I probably might do an after the pen just to kind of see how it ended up. And what I ended, it, I ended up filling it up with. But I, right now, that's what I'm going to go with. And... Yeah, so if you liked this, let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Also, uh, you know, head over to my Instagram, check out some of my stuff. And I will see you at another time. Bye, guys.